Hello, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Ungaku to You, the podcast where three friends come together and break down what's new in the Japanese music industry. This is the podcast for the week of October 16th, 2020. I'm your host, Ken, and with me we have Gray. What's happening, dudes? And Luna. Konbanwa, minasan! Taidaima! Whoa. Woohoo! Woo! All three of us are back once again. So, Luna, I expect you to be gone next week, right? <laughs> no, I won't. I'm done with my travels for right now, so we should be good. It's fun. Hopefully. It's, looks like you had fun, so. It was a good time. The wedding was beautiful. The weather was beautiful. I couldn't ask for a better time, and I need to go back when there's no things going on, if you know what I mean. Yes, so. yes, yes. But with that, what have you been listening to? Not much, actually, since I've... A lot of things have been going on. I did listen to some Blackpink. They dropped their latest album, and it's actually really good. Also, some Chanmina. I went back to Boa. And I guess I'll specify some of Boa's English discography and some of her Japanese. Kodokumi, as their special treat in there. And Banana Lemon, which, stay tuned, because we're going to have a special treat regarding them. That's all I'm going to say right now. And this week's Music Corner... The music corner I chose, which I'm very excited to introduce, you'll find out next week. Or actually, you'll find out this week. So, and that's really it. I haven't dived into too much. What about you, Gray? I am still listening to The Ice pretty much on the regular. I've been listening to their latest single that dropped... Uh, it's called Image. It's fantastic. It's a wonderful song. These guys are killing it. 2020 is their best year, probably. I don't know. But it's it's been good for them. And uh, I'm still mostly listening to The Ice. I was also listening to this week's MC and a, a boy group that's tangentially tied to to them. But we'll, we'll get on that later. But outside of that, nothing too crazy. I am excited that my LOL album that I ordered back in July is finally on its way over. So that's exciting. I can't wait to hear that. Uh, but other than that, nothing too crazy. What have you been listening to, buddy? Let's see here. A bunch of various stuff here. I've been actually listening to a lovely band called Mississippi Khaki Hair, which is a very interesting band name, but they have a very interesting style. been also listening to Lisa because of... All the lovely releases that she has done, Leo 9, is a really solid album. And besides that, I've been listening to Keiju, I went back to him, and a couple of indie songs also. I've been listening to Outdoors again, and Dressing again by Lucky Tapes. So I gotta ask, since since Color Creation is kind of going down here, uh, they has uh, the ice took their spot, so to speak. Yeah, I I think so. Unfor- I mean, I hate I hate to say it, but yeah, the ice is really filling that that hole that heart sh- that that color creation hole. I, I don't know if I'm to the point where I would consider myself the fifth member of the ice, the sixth member of the ice. But yeah, they they pretty much have filled that that hole just because they're they're so vocally strong and stuff they don't harmonize as much as color creation did which is like the one thing i wish they would do more but yeah yeah it's like i i've been listening to the ice pretty much non-stop especially since i downloaded uh their album to uh face like i've i've told my fiance like more than likely i will probably purchase face because it, this is such a great album as by itself and I would like to have it, but I'm waiting until I get like I am in, in a slightly different financial situation because I got a wedding I'm saving for and and all that and also like it took them five months to ship me my LOL album and I've got the second color cre- uh, second palette album from Color Creation that's still sitting somewhere in a warehouse so it's probably another three or four months before I get that one so. Oh, it's I'm not so much waiting. sitting in a warehouse, it's just customs and what they've been doing. So, Yeah, but yes, the, the short answer to your question is yes. But yeah, with that, let's continue on to the news here. And first off is, once again, the 
mass production tour ampm has an another new reasons to celebrate as they continue on with two new brand new releases this month streaming on all digital music streaming platforms we announced last week that they did a remix of iotska song chime and now they have been take tackling a new thing from lupon the third along with a new original track called hurt you which will release on October 14th, so it released a couple of days ago, and October 21st, so by the time you're listening to this, it should be out. So make sure you guys go check them out. They are a very interesting group and a group on the rise, so to speak. So I can't wait to hear more by them soon enough. And then continuing on up to voice actress Soda Amamiya released the track for her song Kimi o Toshite on all digital music streaming platforms. It was used as Chizu Mizuhara's character song in the 12th episode of the hit anime Rent a Girlfriend and was the latest release done by Amamiya since her album Painted Blue earlier in the month. You can check out all the information about that on our site, including the digital music streaming link on our site as well. Moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about rock band Mr. Children. As they've announced, they're going to be dropping their 20th original album album the new album is going to be called soundtracks and it's set to be released on december 2nd the new album was actually recorded in the rack studios in london and also the sunset studio in los angeles and the song birthday which i remember we covered it when it hit the oricon that was in the doraemon movie uh doraemon nobita's new dinosaur so if you are a fan of Mr. Children, uh, this thing is coming out in four editions. We have all the details on the site, along with the trailer that has his song, their song Birthday in it, and a full track listing. So you can get all the details there on the site. And then continuing on up to five member idol group, Saiba announced that they will be releasing a best of album, also named Saiba, on December 16th. This best of album will accumulate all the releases over the group's four-year tender and will include a total of 30 songs include including a new track by member yonomi this will be the swan song so to speak for the group at, from the industry as they will be disbanding after performing at the prestigious budokan next january it will come with three editions and you can check out all the information about this on our site including the music video for Sayanada Flashback on our site as well. Then continuing on up to the vocalist Tomoko Ikeda from the band Shaggy Jr. released the music video for her track Walk In on Tiny Mole's YouTube channel. Released digitally back on September 9th, this is the first release done by Ikeda since the disbandment of the band last year. And she had wrote it with the lovely duo of Klamiko and the wonderful production uh, producer Toshiki Hayashi of Percent C overseeing the entire release. You can check out more information about this on our site, including the digital streaming music link and the music video for Walkin' on our site as well. And then ahead of the release of the upcoming fantasy anime movie Demon Slayer Kitetsu no Yaiba Mugen Train, the then upcoming single Honomura, vocalist Lisa released a music video for said track on her YouTube channel. As previously reported, this will be the latest release done by the singer since Aijo earlier in the year and will be her first physical release of 2020 alongside the album Leo 9 that was released on the same date. You can check out all the information, including all the order tracks, I'm pretty sure it's all sold out by now, for Leo 9 and Honomura on our site as well, including the music video in question. And then continuing on up to indie darlings, Soko ni Naru released the music video for their track Kyoku Gen wa Setsuna on their official YouTube channel, a part of the lovely album Chosetsu that released earlier in the that will release on november 6th it's very interesting and it took that little serious tone that the band is known for it will release with two editions which you can check out 
all the information on our site, including the music video in question on our site as well. Moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about rock band Kanaboon. As they've announced, they're going to be dropping a brand new single called Torch of Liberty and is set to be released on November 25th. The new song is going to be used for the second half of the second season of the popular anime Fire Force. And the song itself is uh, Torch of Liberty is an upper and powerful rock tune that mixes uh, melodies and light guitar riffs with synth sounds. So if you're a fan of Kanaboon or a fan of Fire Force, this is definitely something to be interested in. Torch of Liberty is being dropped in three editions total, so you can definitely check that out on the site. But yeah, continuing on up to four member rock band I Don't Like Mondays, released a music video for their track Mr. Clever on their YouTube channel. Part two of their ongoing five month continuous, continuous release, the band swerves on what fans know about them by taking a more R&B style with a splash of rock. Produced by industry veteran STY, who has previously Worked with groups like J Soul Brothers from Exile Tribe and Daichi Mira, the track inherits the previous artist's flair and making this one an unforgettable one and a must see for fans. You guys gotta check it out. It does do a little bit something interesting. They do take that older brother flair like they have been from Avex as of late. So make sure you guys show check it out. We have the digital music streaming links on our site, including the music video for Mr. Clever on our site as well. Speaking of Daichi Miura, he has announced he's going to be dropping a brand new single titled Antelope and is set to be released on November 11th. Uh, This will be his 27th single overall, and the new single contains a total of three tracks, including the song Yours, which has already been released digitally back in June. Uh, It's going to be released in three editions total, and we have the music video for Yours in the article, along with the pre-order links for everyone to check out. And continuing on up to vocalist Zetakun announced that he'll be releasing his first major label single, Midnight Call, on October 16th. So by the time this is already released, so you go check it out. It's on all digital music streaming platforms. And Zetakun originally got his start back in 2018 by signing with Universal Music Japan earlier in the year. And has this would be his latest release done by the artist since Bed Trip EP back in March and cherishing his new major label debut. Zetakun will be teaming up with vocalist Koji Koji and make this song an unforgettable duet just for the fans. You can check out all the information about that on our site, including the teaser for Midnight Call featuring Koji Koji on our site as well. And then continuing on up to the five-member rock band Bandmade announced that they will be releasing a brand new single titled Different on December 2nd. This will be the latest release done by the group since Conqueror back in December. This will also be the last single recorded under label Nihon Crown before switching to Pony Canyon. Unfortunately, not much information is made available about the single at the time of reporting except that it will be used as an opening theme song for an upcoming anime for the winter season so yeah it's like hella vague so i don't even know man (laughs) and it will drop with only a cd only sound release however not only did they announce this new single they also announced a new album that will be set to release in january of next year however as of right now the album is still unentitled with further information being announced at a further date You can check out all the information about this on our site, including the pre-order links for different on our site, along with the music video for The Dragon Cries on our site as well. And then continuing on up to vocalist Manami Konishi announced that she'll be releasing a brand new album titled Cure on November 25th. This will be the latest album done by her since Here We Go back in 2018 and will be her second album overall. Working on the theme of a quote-unquote, a life-side adult pop album, Konishi commented on the title saying that, for me, music is courageous and pushes me to go forward, and that's the kind of motivational remedy that we need for life. And hopefully she hopes that this will be the motivational remedy for life as of right now because of everything that's going on. It'll include a slew of all-star producers, including Masafumi Goch from Asian Kung Fu Generation, and Takaki Hirogome from Kirinji. So this will be a must-hit for fans. 
It'll come with two editions, and you can pre-order everything on our site, including the music video for Here We Go on our site as well. Moving on up to our next article, we're going to be talking about rock band Brian the Sun, as they've announced they're going to be dropping a greatest hits album called Best Parade. This is going to be the final release that the band puts out after announcing that they're going to be parting ways at the end of the year. It's going to come in two editions, and it's going to feature two brand new songs, uh, Harukaze and Love and Hate. So if you are a Brian the Sun fan, this is definitely something to pick up and grab. It will release on December 2nd. Yes, yes, sorry. And will be released on December 2nd. We have pre-order links in the article, so be certain to check that out. Thank you, Ken. And then continuing on up to Music Corner alum Dai Sansei announced that he will be releasing a brand new album called Drama Days on November 11th. This will be the latest release done by him since Granule Sugar and Cotton Candy back in July and will be his first album overall. It will release with nine tracks total and include previously di- digital release tracks, Gymnasium, From the North, and Shio Sai. The interesting part about this is that the physical release of the album will be available via cassette tape. So if you guys want to break out your good old Walkman, now is the time. Unfortunately, it's only available for Tower Records. And if you guys want to have it, you guys have to be able to read Japanese. But in the meantime, you can check out all the information about that on our site, including the music video for Granulated Sugar and Cats and Candy on our site as well. All right, and moving on up to our last article, we're going to be talking about music duo Yao Sobi. As they've announced, they're going to be dropping their very first physical album, or physical release, period. And that's going to be their album titled The Book, and it's set to be released on January 6th. They've had three singles come out, and so this is going to be pretty big for them. Uh, We're looking forward to it. It's only going to be released in one edition total, so... Uh, if you're a fan of them or if you haven't checked them out yet, this is definitely something to hop on to. We have their song uh, Yoru ni Kakeru in the article, which is the one that's been on the Oricon almost every week since we, we've been doing this. So if you're a Yasobi fan, this is definitely something to check out. Or if you're wanting to check these, the, them out, this is now a great time to do it. And then before we continue on to Music Corner here, we had a lovely little tidbit here of a brand new artist titled Gorilla Attack. And they are a brand new rap duo featuring Higashi Roland and Nishi Roland. They like to take their more intensive and dark take on urban rap with a Dead Street rhymes that just has to be heard. Last year, they made their debut back in August, actually, of last year, and kind of continued on the rise with their lovely EP, Gorilla City, in September of this year. And they actually been a pretty big talk of the music scene, so I just kind of want to give my spotlight on them before we continue on here. You can check out all the information about them on our site. I can't wait to kind of see more by them. They've been kind of interesting to kind of keep their eye on, so hopefully we'll see more by them soon enough. But with that, let's continue on to this week's Music Corner here. And Gray, you introduced us to your lovely artist. So go right ahead and take the reins here. Yeah, I actually went out of my comfort zone a little bit. Because usually I do like groups and stuff like that. But th- today we're doing a male vocalist. His name is Kodai Yoshida. And uh, he was actually a part of a boy idol group that goes by X4. I had never heard of X4 until I started listening to him and checking him out. But I was going to say, I was going to laugh that you verge off, but it ended up being a part of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, you know, I I have a knack. What can I say? These it's an olive branch, but the olive branch is still connected to a majorly big tree. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and it, it's killing me because, well, I'm, I'm going to get into it, but yeah, they're no longer together. And so it, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it, but Yes, X4 came on the music scene back in 2015, and uh, X4 was a mix of four guys total, uh, half Japanese, half Korean, and it wasn't until March of this year they decided to part ways. And I guess Yoshida has been wanting to do solo work for a while because 
Back in 2018, he kind of started laying the groundwork for this. He dropped four singles. Uh, his first being Anata Ga Kid Kidzu Kanai Yoni. Uh, and that came out in July on July 7th. And then he released three additional singles in October of that year. And the same month that X4 disbanded, uh, Yoshida actually dropped his very first album titled Zero. And ever since then, he's released his song, Please Make It Emotional, which dropped back in May. And that was the last single that he's, that he, he's done. And ever since X4 has disbanded, uh, Yoshida's been working on solo projects and, you know, he's been working with, he's working with the stage production of Rent right now too, but he's focusing on his solo work. I really feel like, you know, Yoshida's time with a boy group really shows in his solo work because, you know, it really allowed him to develop his craft. His vocal work is done really, really well. And he writes all of his own work. He he does, he writes all of his own music and he really is able to write to his style. I mean, he, he knows his voice and he's knows what works for him and what doesn't. And he really has a wide range of different types of compositions he likes to work with. You know, he'll, he'll do like a, a punkish rock style. He's got a song that's kind of has a reggae feel to it. He, he does have his, his pop songs and he, he also does wonderful ballads and, you know, he just has this wide range of music that he can really play to. And his vocal work throughout all of it is fantastic. My personal favorite song of his, and I know this is a little controversial, but is his song Tokyo Skip. I, I think that song is like ultra catchy. It, it just stays stuck in my head. But he has a lot of good music. And his latest song, um, Please Make Me Emotional, is also like really, really solid. And he doesn't have a ton, but I think what he does have, this is really, really well done. And he's a solid vocalist. I, I think he's still trying to find himself. I, I do feel like Zero is a little all over the place because like I said, like, you know, there's like so many genres he's tackling, but I, I think he does extremely well and, you know, he's still figuring it out, but I, I think he's going to have an awesome career ahead of him. And you can find all of his work on Apple Music and Spotify, but you can follow him on his website. And he also has a personal blog, which you can find in the article below. So these are just my thoughts on Kodai Yoshida. I'm really eager to hear what you guys thought of them. Uh, Luna, let's start with you. What were your thoughts on Kodai Yoshida? So... First of all, I want to say he is a fantastic vocalist. I mean, he has a great set of uh, pipes on him. I I think I think his ballads are fantastic, especially Hana is probably my favorite track by him. I also thought his song um, Sayonara Ishiki Hito was fantastic as well. I, for me, I feel like his ballad shine because he has a great utilization of his skills. I didn't care for his solo upbeat tracks as I, I just felt like they were a little generic. However, his ballads just shined amazing. I also thought Melody was a really nice song. I will say, I think in when he was in the group X4, they... It's interesting hearing how that differs from his solo stuff. As you can tell, X4 is definitely more dancey. And all of them had fantastic vocal skills. And just the way they did have their composition fit with their songs. So I really enjoyed the music in X4, especially um, one of their albums in particular I thought was a lot of fun. They had some interesting titles for them too. Their album, Crossmate, I thought was a lot of fun. And Funk Dunk Punk wasn't too bad. But as a solo, I think he's he's just starting off. And I'm curious to see what else he's going to do. As I felt like his album Zero, he isn't quite there. I feel like it's a great starter album. And he shows off he has the skills, writing and vocal-wise to go places and I'm curious to see what genre he is going to go in as the album composition wise did feel a little bit all over the place 
but I look forward to seeing more in the future of him just because he is, he's a very talented guy and I'm curious what route he's going to go. And Ken, what were your thoughts on Kodai Yoshida? So, I mean, Kodai Yoshida is very interesting. Absolutely fan freaking fantastic. I will say that much. He did a song by Sika no Owari called Rain, and it's absolutely amazing. It, it was from his live concert that he did a while back, and he's an amazing vocalist. And I think that just because uh, we're mostly judging him on his first album, he doesn't know his what kind of shoe to fit in, so to speak. Because he's a very, very powerful vocalist. And, and that's just by listening to him. You can tell that. Please make me emotional. Like, if he does this more very emotional, power, powerful vocal style, he got it. He got, he's, he's, he's the diamond in the rough right here. That will surely make the next hit. It's just, ironically, it's the stuff that you brought up, like Tokyo Skip. I didn't think that was the strongest stuff. He, vocally, it was very, very good. But compositionalized, it didn't match, in my opinion. But that's just me. And listening to stuff by, by doing his acoustic stuff, just by listening to a lot of his stuff on his YouTube channel alone, it's just one thing to hear. I'm like, yeah, this is a, he's a pretty good vocalist. I can damn well sure. And hopefully he'll get his next break after zero because I think once he finds his sound, so to speak, he's going to click. He's the next big thing. I already can see that. And his time with X4 nurtured that skill of just being an amazing vocalist. I listened to a couple of stuff by X4 and I can see why there's, they're fairly solid, but it's a boy band overall. You can only be as solid as a boy band or boy group can be. If you're not going to be branching out too much, so to speak, but yeah, just if you give a glance or a Google search on his YouTube channel, go check out Rain by Sekinor Wadi. Go check out Automatic. The acoustic live for Time Skip, ironically, is much better in my opinion. <laughs> I, I went through a little rabbit hole yesterday and listening to his acoustic stuff is really, really good. So I want to say thank you for giving us Koda Yoshida. He was a very interesting trip to go down and can't wait to see more so to speak yeah i i'm glad you guys overall really seem to enjoy him and stuff like that because like and I, like I, when i picked him i i actually picked him because i saw title song please make me emotional i'm like i wonder what a song like that would sound like and i listened to it and i thought it was oh you know this is quite interesting and yeah. it just wound up being part of a boy band like I, I don't know i don't know how i like two degrees separation i get with these things but I am glad it's, that overall you it's guys It's either like some group is related to an anime or tokusatsu release or they're a boy group. <laughs> hey, I, I try, like, sometimes I'll, I'll lean into it, but sometimes I try to deviate from it and somehow just still <laughs> find myself in it. I, it's I don't like know how. somehow seven degrees of Kevin Bacon right there, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, my, my, I guess, like, I know what I like, and I just it just winds up. It winds me. up being that way. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm not harassing you for it. It's just it's, I find it hella funny that it just somehow oh. it ends up being this way. Oh no, I, I find too. it hilarious. Too. I was laughing off a uh, off mic about that as soon as you said seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I about died. But I I am glad you guys enjoyed him, and I am eager to see what he does too. So. Hopefully he'll have another release uh, when we do the roundup and we can talk about it then. But like I said, go listen to go search him up on on YouTube. His his Koda Yoshida like mosaic live is a freaking amazing. So go check it out. That was the the tipping point of being like, yeah, he's a really solid vocalist. And I think once once he hones his craft and knows what composition works for him, it's going to work. I, I can already see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he is a powerful vocalist, so yeah, I I think you describing him as a diamond in a rough was pretty spot on. But yeah, with that, let's continue on to this week's Oregon here, and doesn't really change up until like the first half here. So, but yeah, it it was a I don't want to say a lackluster week because like the new additions are interesting, but it was lackluster. It, it was all right. It was all right. 
Yeah. It is what it is because of the the type of charts that we do. So, regardless, this week we'll start off at number ten, and it is Kusui by Ito. Once again, I can see him. The reason why it's on there, it's because of all the TikTok and Instagram reels. They use his song two out, and it's it's very interesting. But regardless, this week it sold a lovely fifteen thousand two hundred and twenty eight points, and going on up to Ganden by. Yonezu Kenshi. It's very interesting. I did see a couple of reels with him specifically using the sound effects part of the song to talk about certain animals and it's hilarious hilarious to see in full motion there. But regardless, this week it sold a lovely 15,404 points and going on up to a song we haven't seen in a while. It is Hakujitsu by King New. It's very interesting that this popped up again. It probably has to deal with the lead singer from King New, he had a little solo project a little while ago, so that probably garnered interest to bring this up back from the grave, so to speak. But this week, it's a lovely 15,676 points. And continuing on, on to a continuous number seven here, it's Akashia by Bump of Chicken. Now, I know how me and you felt about this song, Gray, but this is a new track for you, Luna. So how did you feel about this song? I actually greatly enjoyed it. However, I will say it's typical bump of chicken, which, I mean, you know what you're getting with them, and I'm okay with that. I'm just glad it was on here and we got to talk about them. I just feel that when they do do a song, it's, I like it no matter what because it's bump of chicken. And when I was listening to it, it it's more of a relaxing song and just has a really nice feel to it. And I would love to see more of them on here, but I know... They, you know, it's like when they are, they do do something that's on here. All I can really say is it's really just typical bump of chicken. I don't know how else to describe it, to be honest. And I love it. It's just them doing them. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm glad. Well, yeah, I, I can see that because it is typical bump of chicken. So, but with that, this week I sold a lovely 17,670 points and going on up. Oh, God. <laughs> it is Hello EP by Official Hike Dandazum. Hello again. It's been a while since we saw you. We didn't miss you all too much. Let's just say that much. But this week, hello EP, so they lovely 18,579 points. And going on up to number five, it is Make You Happy by Niju. It's mostly TikTok and, and Instagrams here. It's not much else. And I'm pretty sure the announcement of the new single probably bumped that up too, so... But this week it sold a lovely 22,924 points. And going on up to a new release of this week, it is Fire Scream slash No Rain, No Rainbow by Mizuki Nana. So let's let's have the resident Mizuki Nana lover front and center here. So Greg, go right ahead. What you thought about the song first? It was trash. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was... I will say No Rain, No Rainbow is a superior song. Fire Scream was okay. But No Rain, No Rainbow I thought was pretty catchy. I thought it was um, a lot of fun. And I, I enjoyed that one. But yeah, it, it wasn't too bad. I think if you're a Nani Mizuki fan, you will enjoy this. But other than that, I don't really know if there's too much to say about it. So I'll go. I freaking love Mizuki Nana. Everyone knows here I buy all her music and concerts and whatsoever i mean i think both songs are good however like grace said no rain no rainbow is definitely the superior song on this one it sticks out more i mean i like fire scream but it didn't do as much for me as no rain no rainbow did but all in all this is a fantastic single from her i mean it's solid and for me, Mizuki Nana usually hits the point in all her singles. She does what she needs to do and more. I feel like Fire Scream is your typical Mizuki Nana, uh, like, Simple Gear anime video game track. And it's obvious hearing that. If I'm correct, it is the theme for one of the Simple Gear games. And No Rain, No Rainbow is actually a fantastic B-side. And I feel like when she does do the, or I mean, double A side, the second part of it, so when she does do her like doubles like this, you usually get two solid ones, but I still lean a little bit more toward No Rain, No Rainbow. However, 
Highly recommend both tracks. Check them out. She is one that I'm glad she made it on the charts. She deserves it. She's worked her butt off. And this is her 40th single in her on her pretty much, how do you say it? It was her 40th birthday this year. So 40-40, this is a big deal. Glad to see her on here. Love her. Check it out, please. And you are right. It is used for simple... Uh, simple gear? Simple Simpho gear. gear. Yep. Yep. See, I don't watch anime. So. It's simple actually, Gear X it's an anime. Unlimited, technically. Yes, it's for one of the phone games, if I'm correct. So Simpho Gear has a lot of different things. There's the anime, there's the video games, and Mizuki Nana not only has done all all the themes for Simpho Gear. She also is one of the main voices. So just a little tidbit of information. Promise I'm not crazy. <laughs> well, it's very interesting to kind of listen to the song because, I mean, I, I respect Mizuki Nana and what she does for the industry. However, I'll have to do this little jab here. I love No Rain, No Rainbow, but it's the second best song of the track that has this title because... The only track that is king from this song is the No Rain, No Rainbow by Homei Kazuku back in the early aughts. <laughs> Homei Kazuku. Oh, sup, just, sup. Uh... I'm down with that. That's a yeah, good, no, that that's, a that's, damn good that's, song. That's, that yeah. is probably one of their better songs that I've absolutely loved from them. But No Rain, No Rainbow is a really good song regardless fire screen like you said i it kind of hits the nail on the head there from what you said earlier luna it is a very typical song that she does sing for this type of anime and that was kind of scratching my head being like you know i swear i've heard this before but no this is her style when she usually sings these types of songs for this particular anime <laughs> and it's it was a nice breath of fresh air to listen to no rain no rainbow but both were decent. They're both great. So I'm not rubbing one over the other, but in my opinion, No Rain, No Rainbow was a much solid track for a non-anime fan, so to speak. And I say this, but I love Seiyu's, but... <laughs> but regardless, Fire Screen slash No Rain, No Rainbow sold a lovely 23,462 points. And going on up to number three, it is Yoru ni Kakeru by Yao Sobi. Not much we can say here. It probably will boost up again because of the announcement of the, the album again. So, can't wait. Good for them. This week, it sold a lovely 25,903 points. And going on up to number two, it is Dynamite by BTS. It doesn't really help that this song is the official song for the Samsung S20 lineup that they have right now. So, they play it all the freaking times. And obviously, if you don't know... What that song is, you'll be looking it up and being like, oh, why is it in the Samsung commercial? <laughs> but it's a good song nonetheless, and it's still on here, and that's one of the reasons. But this week, it's still a lovely 34,380 points, and going on up to number one, it is Kissing My Lips Slash Stories by Snowman. Now, this was very, very interesting because... Out of the debuting groups that we that happened over the last couple of years, we really did like Snowmen. I, I personally was impartial to them, but out of the, the double A side that they were a part of, I they were the much better group. But this is the first single that they had on their own, and what do you guys think about it? So, I actually enjoyed the single quite a bit. I really didn't know what to expect, to be honest, because we had heard Stones before, and I know, you know, they did the Stones versus Snowman thing, and that was, you know, how I got introduced to both groups. And so I kind of wasn't sure what to think how Snowman would be compared to Stones, and they definitely are more vocal heavy, and I like that. I will say, I think Stories was, actually, I will say this, not that I think, I know that Stories was my preferred of the two as it had more of a Johnny's vibe to it, which I loved. Very vocal heavy. It had a great composition. I still thought Kiss in My Lips was good. I thought it was a solid track as well. And it had a great dance beat. They also were very vocal heavy, which is great. They show off. They have amazing vocal skills, dance skills and talent. 
I greatly enjoyed Snowman, and this single really is making me look forward to their next release after hearing it, because this is solid. I think both tracks are fantastic, despite me leaning more towards, leaning towards stories as my favorite of the two. And I'm looking forward to seeing more. I mean, their dance skills were so good in those videos, but I mean, they're just multi-talented right here, so... Yeah, I felt like this, like, both these songs were fantastic. I I really like both of them, and I don't know if I'd put one on a pedestal over the other. I felt like both of them were really great in different ways, but Stories does definitely have a way more of a, like, older Johnny's vibe to it, and so if you're a Johnny's fan, Stories is definitely, like, the song I think that will attract you and really pull you in, but vocally these guys are are great i mean just the way they harmonize and the way that they sung together that, that that's what i really like mostly about the boy groups is the harmonization so i really really like them and i remember when they did dd slash imitation rain and i always felt like imitation rain was the better song of the two so i'm glad that this really lived up to what i was hoping it would be and because I, I said it weeks ago that I was looking forward to hearing this because I'm eager to hear what they did next. And they did not disappoint. I was I am super happy with this. And I just wish it was available digitally. I mean, you can watch the music videos. It's available streaming. But I, I know that's a Johnny's thing. So, you know, hopefully one day, you know, fingers crossed. But other than that, yeah, this is a fantastic, fantastic release. Yeah, I mean, so I knew what I was getting into because I covered the music video for Kissing My Lips that this was going to be their style. And I'm just like, ah, I mean, I understand. Like I said, I'm the old man yelling yelling at the clouds here. And stories relieviated my fears of it because it's a much more Johnny style. Granted, it's still a hipper, newer Johnny style, but it still has that DNA in it. Regardless, it was... All right, I liked it, and this is a good, good second release done by the group, and I can't wait to see more. And apparently all of Japan couldn't wait to see more because the numbers for this release was fan-freaking-tastic. They almost m copied what they did for their A-side A -side first single, and that was... They reached 919,689 points. So, congratulations to them. They are probably one of the other Johnny's group to have closely hit over 900,000 on both releases of their debuting year. So, congratulations to them. But with that, let's continue on to the albums just for a bit. Huh, yeah, I wasn't really surprised about that. <laughs> We got Blackpink's, the album Blackpink Volume 1, their Korean album there. At number 10, we got Oishi, Oishi Pasta. Blackpink one is Aru. good. Yeah, Kite by good old Amyo. So. Oh, and the Blackpink got... one is actually available in the U.S. as well. Just heads up. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm, I'm not really surprised. I'm pretty sure the Netflix documentary wasn't really helping drive up numbers there, so. Yeah, it. I found uh, you can find it at local stores such as Target and Walmart. So those of you who do like them, check it out. Most of it's in English. Yeah, and then at number eight, we got Drive by Newit. And then number seven, we got City by Nishiyama Kotaro. He's a really good singer there. We got the Evangelion finally, which is not finally because they still got the stupid movie that come out in next year, next March, I believe, or whatever. But we got that. We got Riona's unknown album. It's a good job for Riona because we've been slowly seeing her on the rise through all the anime stuff that we've been covering as of late. Stray Sheep solidly at number four from Yunezu Kenshi. We got the Love Live Sunshine Art Course Chronicle that chronicles every single release from 2015 to 2017. We got the Token Robin Danshi online character game so you can go check out that and at number one it is Ayan Yoni Nagai Tonari Arugoro Tashikani Genzai Shitai Watashitachi by Kiyakizaka 46 
or should I say Sakura Zaka 46 at this point. <laughs> With that, I want to say look out for a very special episode next week. We'll be actually doing two episodes, so be on the lookout for that. And you'll hear a very special guest pop on, so I can't wait. So that's one thing that is very interesting on my end. Yes, look forward to it. You guys will not be disappointed. It'll be a great special episode. You're in for a treat. But yeah, you can check us out on all the social media stuff on Ongakuryu on Twitter and Instagram. You can check out the site at ongakuryu.com. You can check out our YouTube channel at ongakuryu. You can also check out the lovely, lovely affiliates, Koryu Hunter. He is a Twitch streamer that does all the spooky games and retro game stuff. This week he was doing the Haunted House themed of games. So go check him out at twitch.tv slash Koryu Hunter. K-Y-O-R-Y-U-H-U-N-T-E-R. You can also check out our other affiliate, TimberTap, who is a good old Twitch streamer in his own right. He does all the lovely assortment of games going back to paper mario soon enough and you can check them out at twitch.tv slash timbertaft t-i-m-b-e-r-t-a-f-t you can also check out our other affiliate rose who is your your sister and i believe she is streaming genshin impact on the occasional stuff for monster hunter world and yes you can check, you and can she check her actually out. has something else she'll be streaming soon so stay tuned she just got a capture card all right you can check it out at twitch.tv slash ringstarkitty, R-A-I-N-S-E-I-R-K-I-T-T-Y. You can also check out our affiliate, Fangirl Has No Name. She is a variety streamer who is very, very tight-knit with the Zelda community. You can check her out at twitch.tv slash Fangirl Has No Name, F-A-N-G-I-R-L. H A S N O N A M E. You can also check out the the podcast that I do with Kyo Timber and Fangirl called Potosaurus. This week we we talked about a various amount of things such as Deadbolt, Ill Bleed, Zelda Breath of the Wild since I just finished, Forget Me Not on My Organic Garden. We talked about Genshin Impact occasionally the PS5 teardown and because it was in the Halloween season we talked about very spooky influence in video game horror games and movies I was very silent during that talk so well you can check it out on all podcast streaming services just look up Koryu Hunter same as his Twitch handle on all podcast streaming services for that and you can check out me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ongakuryu. I am joining on the fun with all the spooky game works here as I'm going through playing the original Resident Evil remake on PS4. If you want to see a grown man yell out or Jesus Christ on all lovely things there and every little thing that moves, you want to hear that. Because I, I was doing that every single time. I, I, I had to stop. There was a crow crowing in the background. I had to stop when I first heard it because it scared the bejesus out of me. But yeah, yeah, you can check us out at twitch.tv slash ongakadu, same as the podcast name. But you can follow me at otyken1, where I talk about the lovely Bang Dream, Aina Aiba, Bang Dream, the MLB Finals, or the playoffs, which I'm probably going to cry and just curse at the lovely Atlanta Braves because they are part to gentlemen sweep my Dodgers here. Bang Dream and Aina Aiba. Also, I want to say this very much so because today, as we are recording in Japan on October 17th, it is the two lovely girls that I look up to in the music industry, Oshima Yuko and Aina Aiba's birthday today, so... I know for whatever reason they aren't listening, but for all the fans that are, I wish them a very happy birthday, and they are very close to my heart in the music industry. But yeah, where can we find you, Gray? You can find me on Twitter at Omagaku Gray, where I tweet about what I'm watching, what I'm playing, all that fun stuff. I am going out of town this weekend, so I will be back Monday, though, and I am eager to talk about the latest episode of Saber. And you, Luna? You can find me on Twitter, Letterboxd, my anime list, Anime Planet, as Luna Maria 87 and you can find me on Instagram as Nerdy Collector Luna, where I talk about what I'm watching, what I'm listening to, 
And right now it's October, so it's all about the scary movies. So if you like that stuff, check it out. Once again, I want to say thank you very much for listening to this week's episode of Angakadu. I'm your host, Ken, saying thank you very much and have a great day. Aloha. All right. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. We greatly appreciate it. We will see you next week. Ja matane. And this is great. Hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. We'll see you right back here next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>